Good evening, YouTube. It is Derbador to Wildor here, coming at you with a public service announcement from your local state party. <clears throat> Please practice social distancing. Please remain six feet apart from people around you as to not contract a, the, the disease COVID-19, not China disease because we can't say that. <clears throat> Please stay indoors and at your home unless you are conducting essential activities or an essential worker such as trade work, <clears throat> law enforcement, firefighting, police, etc. as outlined in said government document. If you are an essential worker, you need to carry papers that you can show police at checkpoints to, to prove to them that you are essential and that you are going about your essential activities to help greater the great state of North Carolina. Things that are not essential activities as the governor's executive order says, paddle boating in the ocean. That's not it. That's not essential. You you should be working, paddle boater man. Um. That's, uh, that one too. Hey, sorry, I'll do it. God. Um, playing kickball at the, at an empty park with your child. That's not essential. You should be working. Look at you. You put grandpa and grandma in danger and you practically killed babies. And you you should not be playing kickball. You should be working. You're not essential. You should not be protesting. Protesting is not an essential activity. You should be working. downtown Raleigh protesters get back to work sign your local state party leaders you're not essential go home is that it can I go I won't get shot all right YouTube not fun and games is over we're gonna get to our actual thing for today we're gonna get to our actual video for today, I couldn't help it. I've been having, um, I've just, we, it's North Carolina. We got a lot of crap going on, so I had, I had to make a video, I had to make a part of my video about this because I hadn't talked about the COVID nineteen. I decided it's finally time for me to talk about it, so I talked about it. All right, I think you all understand my point of view on it. Stay at home. So anyway, there's a reason I have a pizza box. And we're going to talk about it here in a second. What about does this look like? It looks like a base plate, no? See right there, we got our little marks right there, cut out for marking base plates. This is for a one foot by one foot base plate with five eighths holes in it. Now I'm going to show y'all what we do with that. All right. So as a project I did, to, I did this week, setting some anchor bolts. I'm going to be going back out tomorrow and welding it when the weather's better and the lifts are available again. That set anchor bolts. And we're gonna say that's our wall. That's our very crooked wall. I hope everybody see that. Let me pull this forward. Ah! Dang it! Stand by. There we go. I got the camera sitting on the 210 MP. So <laughs> this is our wall. It's a very crooked wall because I drew it. Now on this wall, this is just a wall. There's no ceiling here. All right. There is a chimney. A chimney. Now, way up in the sky, above the building, well, the top of what was the building was a roof, it's no longer a roof, there's an I-beam going across, like so, 
that then goes into the wall. I'm dropping stuff. Now, I'd already done some work at this building before, and it was for those gates I installed. Now, they're concerned about this wall here. If you saw those gates, my gate's actually right over here. Right there, that's where my gate is. Right off of that wall. But they're concerned about this wall, potentially the wind blowing the wall over because it's a really tall freestanding brick wall. I don't think we get that much wind around here, but whatever. They want, they want to pay me to do some well, and I ain't gonna argue with it. So, what we're doing is we are taking and putting a base plate on the chimney with a four x four post that goes over to the I-beam and is welded to that I-beam. Partially good, we're somewhat there. Next thing is we want base plates here and here with pieces of two by two square tube bracing it up. And there's multiple of these. There's actually three of these right here. So, how do you get this base plate? Because we first thing you have to do is you have to drill the holes, then you have to set the anchors, and you have to set epoxy in the anchor because it's old brick. You can't use the, the sleeve type anchors. They won't work. You have to use epoxy. I hate using epoxy, but it is what it is. I love the self, the self um, anchoring anchors. I love those so much. They're awesome, but oh well, we gotta do, we gotta do this. So how do you get level here? To, there, there's no, nothing to help indicate that already there. There's nothing there to help indicate how to get this plate level with that. Of course, that's a two by two base plate and the I-beam is two foot by two foot. Or two foot high, I'm sorry. Two by two foot by two foot uh, base plate, I-beam's two foot high, big I-beam. So how do we know how to set that base plate level? Well, let me show you guys something. And it does not involve lasers. Believe it or not, guys, it does not involve lasers. Now, the reason it doesn't involve lasers, I was too freaking poor to afford the Bosch laser system I wanted because of this COVID-19, people decided they don't have to pay their welder anymore if they don't feel like it. So thousands of dollars that I'm owed is pro I'm probably not gonna see or, are, or I will see very, very late. So I'm hard for money, but I have to get this job done. So. I got so I was like there has to be another way to do this you know what did our fathers and grandfathers do before lasers a string and a string level it's not 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 that hard at all but you literally take this string wrap it around the I-beam where the string comes over the top and then you take the string let me undo it take the string and if you can operate a fishing pole, you can operate this. And you take the string, you clip the level onto it. It's got epoxy on it. Everything out there I was dealing with has got freaking epoxy on it. You clip the level onto the string. And we did say this the top, it get, wraps around the I-beam and comes across top of the I-beam. We take this over to the wall, right? And I just drop this in the basket of the lift I'm in. And I use my thumb and I, and I get this level where the bubble in this is level. And you, you pull it tight on your thumb like so. And once it's level, you know, obviously it's tied to the beam here. So you, so it's a one hand, so it's only a one hand operation holding that thing there. Then you can take a marker and zoop, put a mark right underneath your thumb. And now you have a mark that is the same height as the top of your eye beam over there, now over on the other side. Now you know where the top of your base plate needs to be. Pretty cool, right? Now, then 
you just mark you know your base plate you mark two foot by two foot and then three feet then I'm three inches I'm sorry uh -huh. then three inches in to where your bolt holes are and put your bolt holes in now this same principle can be used for this right here you got your height over here but not over here you're way up in the air this is nowhere near the ground where a tape measure is gonna work at all it's just completely ineffective to even try to use a tape measure Excuse me. all right so well, I say a tape measure from the ground up. You still use a tape measure. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your pizza box here at the specific height. That's right here. I'll slap our pizza box up there. Bam! And get the pizza box level. Stick like a little torpedo level or something. Like that. Boop, 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 boop. Get it level. Mark, 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 mark. Then we drill the holes. Put the anchor bolts in. Then, with our bottom corner anchor bolt right here, we go from here over to the wall and we use the string. So what we do is we tie the string to the bottom inside corner anchor bolt. And we take it and we run that string over to the other wall right here. And then we put, then we get it level, we measure off of the wall where we want the first bolt to be on that mark it get it level mark it now this bolt level right here and this bolt level right here are now the same level they're at the same level then we take our pizza box template again with our little hole right here we put this little hole on that mark we made bam level it right level it then mark the other holes drill them set the anchors now this and that are at the same level so when it comes time to install stick the base plate on stick the base plate on bolt the base plate down same here bolt base plate down then do the beam across and the beam across here now how do we find the angle on this thing right without fancy contraptions and stuff like that there is this magical contraption right here this right here this is what i'm gonna be doing tomorrow i'm gonna be taking this bad boy right here you know, what we what we would do is we'll take this and we'll set this on the base plate, right? On this base plate right here, or this one, whatever is easiest when I get out there. I set this on there, boom. And I'm going to tie a string around this and set it about at the middle. And then I'm going to bring that string over to that other base plate and get it all lined up and level. Once it's all lined up and level. And this and this is in line with the string like right along the side here I'll probably run the string along the side that way I can tell you can tell the string if you're bowing in or out but once it's level coming off of there and once I have that angle it gives me the angle I need to cut the tubing at to install the tubing then all I need is an inside length from here to here which I could draw off a tape measure real quick here to here inside length set set the angle with this device right here on it bam got my angle and it should be pretty freaking close if not dead on it should be pretty freaking close all right so how much did this cost well the Bosch laser leveling system I was looking at getting was about ninety a hundred dollars ninety to a hundred dollars right not saying it's a bad investment at all I'm sure it's great right but let's just be clear the thing a string was five dollars this was two right this was two dollars five two that's seven bucks right here seven bucks versus a hundred and it does the same thing pretty much and there's no electronics to get fried this thing and sit in the truck no batteries anything like that as long as you don't drop this thing or run it over it'll probably live forever in a day same with this it's string so it's very robust and you don't have to spend as much money now I'm not saying anything wrong with the Bosch laser system I will eventually get one because I really really want one I don't have the money for it right now so I'm thinking outside the box here to get the same results with less money 
and still keep working. And the thing is, now if I do get the Bosch laser system and something happens and I forget batteries or it breaks or something like that, because it is an electronic, you don't want to rely on an electronic. So if it breaks or something like that, I have a fallback that always works and I can still keep working. And understanding these basic principles will allow me to use that Bosch laser system even better. It's just like when you're doing land navigation. If any of you have done land navigation, you know, UTM grid reading, you know, using a compass and all of that, it makes so much sense how your GPS works and what your GPS is trying to tell you once you understand that portion. It's just so much, it's so much different. It's like, uh, like manual GPS. That's one way of putting it. Um, like, uh, like driving a manual car and then going to an automatic. You see what I'm saying? You'll appreciate it more and you'll understand it better. All right. So that, I just wanted to put that out there because good information. And guys, we're at 2,000 subscribers. You believe that. And you guys, if I'm not putting out enough content, you need to go to Noah's Welding. Look him up. Subscribe to his channel. He's got so much good content. And it's so terrible in my opinion. He's only got 500 subscribers. I got 2,000. Half of y'all at least needs to go over and subscribe to his channel. He has got some really good content stuff you guys would not believe the good stuff he has on his channel me and him do cooperation videos all the time together so if you want to see more of me you need to go subscribe to his channel because sometimes i'll be on i'll be doing videos with him on his channel sometimes he'll be over here doing videos with me on my channel but either way either way you gotta go subscribe to his channel all right go subscribe to noah's welding i'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe to my channel i got 2000 i'm happy go subscribe to noah's welding all right please he needs more subscribers i'm serious all right thank you guys for watching this video if you like it please be sure to hit that like button if you have any comments drop them below i'd love to see them y'all have a fantastic day